white. Look white and your nose is white and everything is white. But they're going to fight that you're not white. I chose to remain the way I am and to be rejected. Hello and thanks for joining us for our weekly film show with critic Lisa Nettleson and me. And we're joined by an award-winning French documentary maker, Yolande Zoberman's first film in 1987. Classified People showed the realities of living under apartheid in South Africa through the eyes of a couple considered interracial under the country's classification laws. The film has been restored and is being re-released in France. Now, Yolande, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you. Hello. Um, you won a César, which is the equivalent of a French Oscar for your last documentary, M, in 2018, which talked about um, sexual abuse in an ultra-Orthodox Jewish community in Tel Aviv. But that's your last film. Your first film was more than 30 years ago. Uh, before we take a look, of it, look at it, um, tell us the story of how it came to be. I always was obsessed with uh, borders, how to cross borders between people. And I think that I went with a question in my mind, which was how can we live when we're um, designed, I don't know if designé, comment, comment on dit? Uh, designated. Designated in a certain way. What freedom can we have? And it was a very political moment. It was a very dogmatic moment. And the people that I filmed um, showed me that Maybe the most, the, the most political place is intimacy. The way you live is your politics. And I needed uh, really to have that. Before uh, going to South Africa, I was quite lost in the world. Uh, I did not believe in politics. I did not believe in politics, political talks. And suddenly I could believe in something, which was the intimacy. OK, well, um, let's take a look at classified people. You were classified coloured, and you came from a white mother, but and and your children also came from a white mother, yeah. and they were classified white. Yes, Why it, does, it works out like that because it says that is where you will have to dig deep into colour affairs in order to get those matters sorted out. But they don't care about that. They only use their own discretion to see how, what kind of a person you make out to be. Mm. Now there we saw Robert and his beautiful wife is Doris. How did you meet them? Um, before going to South Africa, somebody gave me a small book, um, which was called uh, Apartheid from A to Z to Z. And uh, in this book, there was a small article about the guy who is in the movie and who refused to be classified white. And um, so I really learned about race classification and it was and all the tests that you have to go through. And uh, I got uh, um, very interested and to see how it could cut a whole family in two, in two parts. And the film was made in secret. Uh, did you get caught? Did you get into trouble? How did you do it? In fact, we did. At the beginning, I had to film somebody that was classified eight times, reclassified eight <laughs> times. And we, were, we had problems with the police, and, and the police came to take us. But um, luckily enough, we did not have the equipment, so we, uh, we, could, uh, we could escape. But um, it was such a joy to do this film to do this film at this time, which was so hard, and to see this love story. Because I wanted to, um, you know, I was very impressed by a movie called Mr. Klein of uh, Joseph Lozé, where everybody could be Mr. Klein. It was not only the other. And I think that in the film, there's this sense that we could, all of us, be classified of so something else that's what we think we are. And then everybody can feel maybe what Robert was feeling and what Doris was feeling. Yeah. Preludes, the collective that restored your film, is dedicated to re-releasing 
the first films made by filmmakers of note. So when you look at classified people now with decades of experience as a filmmaker, are there things you would do differently? And does it feel like you made this or somebody you used to be? I wouldn't, no. I would do exactly the same way. And uh, yeah, I know because this movie changed my life. And when we do projection now, we can see that for the people, it's like if it was done just now and people go out with a sort of flight in, in the eyes because something is possible. Something is possible. We can, we can work on our lives, on our intimacy. I mean, they really, uh, um, they, they are fantastic. They are uh, the, the people that I filmed. Just, Except it, the racist guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it still seems um, so relevant today. Classified People is being um, released in French cinemas this week. Let's have a look now at um, some of the other films out in France. And Cannes competition film Last Summer is the first film in 10 years by French writer-director Catherine Breyer. And Breyer is an outspoken pioneer whose past films star fascinating actresses like Isabelle Huppert and Asia Argento. Um, Lea Drucker is the lead in Last Summer. Now tell us more about this contemporary tale in which sex looms large. Indeed it does. Uh, Drucker plays Anne, a successful lawyer who defends children and young people, which proves to be ironic in light of a turn her life takes. She's happily married and the mother to two adorable, precocious adopted daughters. French producer Saïd Ben Saïd asked forthright iconoclast Brea to do a French version of a recent Danish film about the passionate but wildly inappropriate affair between an adult woman and her husband's 17-year-old son from a previous marriage. Now, Anne, who's in her early 40s, and Theo, who is 17, embark on an incredibly powerful adulterous affair. The sex is sensational and the risk considerable. Okay, well, let's take a look at a relationship that shouldn't exist, but does. Do you want a beer? It's going to be first by the magnetophone. It's going to be hard to tell you the first time. Assieds-toi, j'ai te parler. J'ai eu des vrais échanges avec Théo. Il m'a dit que vous deux, vous, que tu as eu une liaison avec mon fils. Tu vas pas me dire que tu l'as cru une seconde. Now, it's less common to see an older woman with um, someone much younger on screen, isn't it? Did it shock you? Um, I have to say, I find the transgression here strangely refreshing, keeping in mind that to be depicting something is not the same as condoning it. Their carnal connection and the way it's filmed is powerful and sincere. Anne and Theo most definitely both want to be having sex with each other as often as they can, steal the time to be horizontal. But an emotional glitch intercedes and a power imbalance becomes as real as the lust on display. Now, Brea, born in 1948, began her career at age 20. She has survived a crippling stroke and uh, being conned out of most of her money by a charismatic crook to continue making movies where sex and specifically female desire are always a major component. She She's a trailblazer in the best possible way, in addition to novels. She has written many screenplays, including 1981's La Peau, directed by Italy's Liliana Cavani, who was just the recipient at age 90 of a Lifetime Achievement Award in Venice. Last Summer is a very deft film with flawed but fascinating characters. Okay, worth a watch to another Cannes film now um, that won the jury prize, Fallen Leaves. It's Finnish director Aki Kurismaki's 18th movie in four decades. Um, tell us more. Well, with just 5.6 million people, Finland shares a 1,340 kilometer border with Russia. And Russia, most people would say, has been behaving very badly on the world stage. This is a poetic tale with an unavoidable political subtext made by a gifted realist whose take on reality is always delightfully off kilter. Now, Chorus Maki's deadpan, melancholy style is unmistakable. His films are bemused and beautifully composed. The characters are usually outsiders, including people we might be too quick to label as losers. The characters may be out of work or alcoholic or just plain lonely or 
all three, but they always hang on to their dignity. Now, this film only lasts one hour and 18 minutes, and the director has said he's worried he'll bore people if he goes over 80 minutes. He's also said, quote, without style, our lives would be even more pitiful than they already are, end quote. Now, that doesn't sound like a guy who's going to treat us to a love story, but that is what this movie is. Wow. Three films about love stories then. Um, any, any of, which of those would you like to go and see if you had to choose summer, Last Summer or Fallen Leaves? Both. Both. <laughs> You're interested. Do you like um, Kurosmaki's work? I like it very much. And I'm very interested of this last movie of Catherine Briat too. And um, yeah, I want to go to see them both. Three very different types of love story in today's film show. And a bit of trivia for you before we go. Um, Aki Kurosmaki and his brother Mika founded the Midnight Sun Film Festival, which unspools in June when the sun never sets in Finland. Thank you so much, Lisa. We're going to leave you now with the deadpan humour of Fallen Leaves. Thanks to today's guest, Yolande Zoberman. It's a pleasure to have you on the set. And the restored version of your film, Classified People, is in French cinemas now. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Thank you. You don't want to see any of your behavior. I don't know your name.